Hey my friends, welcome back to Storytime. Glad you could join me for another chapter of Friska, my friend. And remember, Friska's missing, thought to have been stolen, but we don't know. Colin hasn't found her yet, so I wonder where is she? And I was desperately trying not to have a sneaky peek ahead and I succeeded, so I'm waiting to see what happens next. And of course, we'll take a devotion from our indescribable book. So, get yourself comfortable, get settled, and I will make a start. Okay, so let's go with Friska, my friend, chapter six. The week passed slowly. The police said they were still keeping their eyes open, but so far they'd seen nothing of a black mongrel dog. Every day, Colin hurried back from school with just a tiny hope in his heart that Friska might come rushing to meet him. But there was no sound except the cows mooing as they went milking or Growler's deep bark. Growler was a big dog who guarded the yard and he wasn't very friendly, but he seemed to know Colin was upset. He licked Colin's hand and pretended to be a gentle dog. Colin would sometimes cry into his bristly coat and bring him extra dog biscuits. On Saturday morning, Colin woke very early. Dad was in the barn and the house was silent. It was a clear day with golden leaves blowing about. Sprays of crimson creeper waved in wind. Colin leaned on the sill and suddenly knew what he was going to do that day. He would have one last try. After all, Friska must be somewhere. He thought of waking Joy and asking her to go with him. But then he remembered she had to go back to school for a hockey match. He dressed and went to the kitchen. He found some food, a bread roll, an apple and some pork pie. He put on his wellingtons. He was ready to set off and no one must stop him. He wouldn't tell his mum and dad in case they tried to talk him out of it. He'd just write a note and go. So he started off down the track. He went past the crab apple tree and the orchards. He went past the blackberry hedges. Then he came to the road and the lay-by where the van and its trailer had parked. It had been heading north towards Worcester and there were hop yards all the way. Who knows, he said to himself, I might turn out to be a good detective. I might even be one when I grow up. He trotted along as the warm September sun rose in the sky. He was going down a road where a fluffy plant called, called Old Man's Beard grew. There were also bright red rose hips in the hedges. Behind the hedges, the hop yards stretched away as far as he could see. But there were no caravans. Only little clusters of sheds where the pickers who didn't have caravans bedded down. Colin went as close to these as he dared and watched for a long time. But they were mostly locked and deserted, for the people were all out working in the fields. There were no dogs about. He began to get very tired and sat down under a tree to eat his lunch. He kept back some pork pie in case he found Friska. The sun... <coughs> excuse me. The sun was almost overhead now and he knew that he would soon come to a village. He knew that because he had sometimes driven there with his dad. He also knew that there was a shop. He felt very thirsty and was thrilled to find some change in his pocket. He could buy something to drink. The village came in sight at last. He trailed into the shop looking hot and dusty. The shopkeeper was a kind woman and let him sit on an empty bottle case to drink the coke he bought. The shop was almost empty and the lady was chatty. So Colin told her all about Friska and asked her whether she knew of any caravans parked nearby. Well, there's three or four parked on the common through the village, she said. But you be careful. What do you think you're going to do if you see your dog? I'll call her by name, said Colin. She'll come to me straight away. And maybe there'll be others who'll come as well, said the woman. Don't you do any such thing. If you see your dog, you go straight home and call your parents. They shouldn't have let you come all this way alone. You're just a kid. What are the hop pickers like, said Colin? There's good and bad, 
much the same as anyone else. Some are really nice, some are really rough, but they won't take kindly to walking off with what they think is their dog. Look, if you run up against any trouble, you come right back here, okay? Okay. Colin set off past the cottages and the houses. He walked until he could see the vans and trailers on the common. There was quite a group of them, one behind the other. He moved a little nearer and then stopped. The last caravan but one was long and white and had scarlet curtains. Colin knew it at once. There was another caravan parked just beyond it. The hop pickers who had come in for their lunch were sitting round on steps and benches drinking from mugs. Right in the middle of the group was a large Alsatian dog. It's a cliffhanger. That's the end of the chapter. You're going to have to join me next time to find out what happens. And if Frisk is there with the hop pickers, what's Colin going to do? Will he get into trouble? Will they be kind? Will they be mean? <gasps> join me for chapter seven next time. So let's finish with a devotion from our indescribable book. <clears throat> this one is called The Star Counter. Look up to the skies. Who created all these stars? He leads out all the army of heaven one by one. He calls all the stars by name. He's very strong and full of power, so not one of them is missing. And that's from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. A galaxy is a gigantic collection of stars, dust and gas, all held together by gravity. Earth the Sun and all the other planets that make up our solar system are just a tiny part of our galaxy called the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way is so huge that scientists think between 100 billion and 400 billion stars are in it. They don't know exactly how many there are because there are just too many stars to count. But the Bible tells us that God counts each and every star and he calls them all by name. Oh, and by the way, that's not just the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. God counts and names each star in all of the billions and billions of galaxies that we know about and the billions and billions of galaxies that we haven't even discovered yet. That's how big and how great and how awesome our God is. God is bigger than anything we have ever seen or anything we could ever dream of or imagine. He is huge and his universe is ginormous. But do you know what's even more astonishing and wonderful? That same God who knows the stars' names also knows your name. Looking up into the sky might make you feel small, like a tiny little speck floating in the vastness of space. But you are important to God. He knows you and loves you and wants to be the most important part of your life. He wants to build a relationship with you that will never, ever, ever end. Be amazed. If you want to try to count all the stars we know about in the Milky Way galaxy, how long would it take? Want to make a guess? Well, by counting one star each second, it would take you 3,168 years. 
Next time you're out at night, see how many stars you can count, but don't stay out there for thousands of years. God, I look up at all those stars and I am amazed that you know all their names. Most of all, I'm glad that you know my name. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for these stories and thank you for the um, just the excitement of bringing us together through the books. Lord, as we look at the stars, may we look at them with fresh eyes and just wonder at how many there are, how many we can see, how many that we can't see and just just think about the fact that you know the names of every star, but also you know our names. We are all important to you. You love us hugely. So God, as we go about our time, as we do our schoolwork, as we continue with chores and just exercising when we can, Father, just help us to remember how amazing you are and how important we are, each of us, to you. And at this time, Lord, we thank you that you are with us, that you are caring for us, you are looking after us. So, God, we thank you for that. Amen. So, thank you, everyone. Join me next time for another chapter of Frisca, my friend, and another devotional. Until then, have a lovely time, stay safe, get lots of schoolwork done, and enjoy yourselves, enjoy the fun that you're having at home. See you soon. Bye, everyone.